I will give them that it's a novel concept that they came up with. Believing in Freddy Krueger gives him more power, eventually extending to heating up the house, blowing up small things inside and around the house. It feels like the first one spent more time on the relationships. I mean, I believe that Glenn and Nancy love each other, but I don't really believe that Jesse and the chick love each other. How long has she even known him for? It's a bit near the end. I didn't personally feel like there was a lot of tension surrounding whether or not he would kill everybody at the party. A ton of people dying isn't necessarily scary. The idea of one person that we care about dying is. And in the first one, the ending was more, have we defeated him? I mean, he can only kill so many running around the real world as Freddy Krueger. His face is all burnt. He's not going to get close to that many teenagers. Unless he can look like Jesse again or something. That bit with the dog with the faces on it was just weird. Not scary or creepy. Not to me, anyway. Honestly, the idea of someone killing you in your sleep, in your nightmares, is really scary. The idea of a killer in this world with supernatural powers... That just feels far-fetched to me, I don't know. Does that make any sense? I also like the build-up and atmosphere of paranormal activity way more than the ending. Which I won't give away here for anybody who hasn't seen that. I think they should have gone with a seduction kind of thing for how he gets to do quote-unquote evil deeds. Because that's how it happens in real life. You get to thinking that maybe you'll get away with it, maybe it might be fun. Then you start doing things. Oh no. Not things. You know, it isn't by being scared of it. You know, it isn't being scared of it. It's once you get past being scared of it. Candyman Day of the Dead had the same problem. I guess the leg bite is supposed to be a follow-up on the claw thing. You know, primal fear. Which, by the way, is an excellent film. The ending really couldn't have been any more obvious. In the first one, it actually worked. Also because it was a return to a normal, safe situation. In this one, it was just the opening scene all over again. I don't know, it's just like the first one is someone else's sins coming back to haunt you. And this one is don't fall asleep in Nancy Thompson's house or Freddy Krueger's gonna possess your body and sleepwalk the shit out of killing people. It just isn't as good. Moving on to Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, The Dream Warriors. Oh boy. This one is the sequel that people liked. I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna try to give a fair, objective, spoiler-free review. And after that, I'll get into the specifics of what bothered me for people who have watched the film. This time, the concept is that a group of kids, well, teenagers really, have been having sleeping problems. Because of this, they're all in this hospital ward. And two doctors are trying to figure out how to best treat them. Enter Nancy Thompson has a bit of experience with this sort of thing, and she tries to convince them that the nightmares aren't a natural or essentially safe thing. And yes, as you may have heard, or as the title may have given away, the teenagers have special powers in their dreams. Because they're fucking Power Rangers, and morphing is going to sleep. If the concept doesn't bother you, you might like the film. If it appeals to you, there's a pretty good chance you'll like the film. You can probably already guess that I didn't myself care for it. The film is directed by Chuck Russell, of The Mask, Eraser, and The Scorpion King. Yeah, he knows his way around effects laden films. However, not everything he touches turns to gold. The Mask is quite good, Eraser is not that compelling, and The Scorpion King, by most accounts, is decent at best and really bad at worst. I will say that all four are certainly entertaining. And it should be noted that when he has a good script, I'd say he turns in something pretty good. That was the case with The Mask. Some would say it's the case here. 
wasn't really the case with Eraser. And the effects were quite good, the claymation especially. And there are some that really stand out in your mind. For some unfathomable reason, they've changed Freddy's powers from he'll kill you in your sleep in what may or may not be an inexplicable way, a way that we can't put our finger on. Yes, we all have one finger. Two, he makes them sleepwalk and thus hurts them. I can't claim that I really liked any of the characters in this. They seem kind of stereotypical, flat, one note defined by just one attribute. And I honestly didn't care what happened to them. Even Nancy just isn't as good as she was in the original. This at no point evokes the feeling of being in a nightmare. Maybe I should elaborate on my problem with their abilities in the dream world. If this was a straight fantasy adventure kind of thing, okay, sure. But horror really should not have a level playing field. The whole point is he might get you, it might get you, whatever might get you. If you want a straight fight by two forces who are equal, pick an action film. And even then, you do kind of have to look hard for it. We like seeing people overcome obstacles. It gives us hope to see two entities who are basically equally powerful and one of them beats the other just doesn't quite have the same effect. And even if none of that matters to you, in my personal opinion, their abilities are lame. Freddy doesn't chase as much, and when he does, it isn't as effective as it was before. This is where he completely gets into the one-liners and the verbal taunting. Like the second one, this has things that are bizarre instead of creepy. The creative gags are few and far between, and this kind of seems like it's really straining itself to, to produce such, because the attacks seem absurdly specific. As if Kruger can't go after someone without tailoring it to that specific person. You know, instead of using universal fears. And this was Patricia Arquette's movie debut, and it shows. In fact, the only person giving a good acting performance in this is really Lawrence Fishburne. The ending is quite weak. This provides some backstory, and that part is okay. Spoilers! Little girl, don't go in there. No, come back. Little girl, maybe we can take an acting class together. The burnt child skull's pretty nasty. That was really awkward, the way they tried to make it appear that she couldn't move. They did that way better in the first one. I'm really glad she didn't have to bump into all of those hung bodies. I'm also glad we didn't get a close enough look at any of them to see if they were well hung. Isn't it funny how the first time we meet Fishburne in this, he's actually talking about something thing affecting people's brains without their knowledge? Why did she tear her stitches? Is it just me, or does Dr. Neil look like the Goot? You know, Steve Gutenberg? That bit about someone cutting off their eyelids to stay awake was pretty gruesome. They call me the walker. Why? Because I walk in my sleep. And I can't get enough of Chuck Norris. So, they've been having these dreams for a while, and... None of them have died. Freddy must have fallen on hard times. This snake was okay. For how effective that should have been, I was kind of underwhelmed. I'm getting kind of sick of these characters not believing that falling asleep is dangerous. This time, even one of the dreamers didn't believe it. I know I said this in the review itself also, but... Is anybody else bothered by how... ridiculously specific and unique the ways he attacks these people are. It's all from what they create. I guess the moral is, if you live on Elm Street, better craft something that's easy to deal with. Why does Freddy take so long to kill him? Were there no other places he could throw him off? Yes, stand there and yell towards him. Don't nobody run up and see if you can grab him before he falls off. I was quite relieved to find that they didn't spend forever having, you know, the death kit be understood. I just think it was much more chilling in the first, where the deaths were inexplicable. You couldn't possibly explain someone being rammed up against the ceiling and cut while up there, or someone being swallowed 
then spit out by their bed.